Hello everyone, welcome back to Ask Madhav. Today is a special episode as we have a special guest with us along with Madhav. Please welcome CEO of Real Media, Madhav Seth and President and VP of Qualcomm India and Sark, Rajan Vagadia. Hi guys, how are you? Thank you very much again for hosting me in your own my show. And uh, today we have a very special guest, Mr. Rajan from Qualcomm and uh, he'll be answering all your queries regarding chipsets. So since we have the chipset experts in house, our major queries will be about that only. And the first question comes is, what makes Qualcomm processor different from others? Qualcomm invents breakthrough technologies that transform not just the smartphones, but industries on how devices and humans connect, communicate and compute. Snapdragon mobile platforms are custom designed such that each individual block or core which actually forms the system is optimized. This is done to deliver the next level user experience. Another one just for you. That are you guys working on a mid-range processor with high performance and will Realme be the first one to use it? We are proud to be an important partner in the success of this young brand Realme. We have closely worked at all levels and we see how the latest and the greatest of Qualcomm processors enable and further the success of Realme. I would say that ideally I would wish that all the Realme devices are based on Qualcomm. Mother, would you like to add something to it? For me, power mid-style is what we believe and hence product philosophy is also about the same power mid-style. Hence we will always go by the user's voice and demand. Yes, we are working with Qualcomm closely and optimizing our upcoming product. We'll always be user-centric and we'll look at the product portfolios and the user preferences and we'll keep on selecting the best chipsets according to the product preferences. Our users are like definitely waiting to see what comes from this relationship. For sure. Another query from uh, our user like, how are Cryo custom cores are more powerful than any other cores? See, custom consumer expectations drive innovation. Uh, performance and power are the two key pillars and aspects for each of device. We often customize the core which is, a, which is basically the CPU and integrate for a better optimized performance with the other elements of the core. There, thereby we deliver an overall better user experience. Good to learn that actually. So time to take uh, some, some tough questions now. Let's start with, uh, so there's a fuss about a roll processors that is Snapdragon 710, but the competition is promoting this as a premium chipset in their various products. So is the chipset different from what we have on Realme X? Uh, every chipset takes a long time and a great effort to create, right from the design onwards to when you bring it to the market. And there are this hardware and the software engineers work over months to bring a chipset. Some chipsets last longer than others based on their appeal and the capability to continue delivering new customer experiences. I'll take one example. We had Snapdragon 625 which lasted almost three years. Our partners like Realme take the call on what they find best fit for the device at the position they want to launch in the market. Madhu, what will you say about that? I think the 710, the most first commercial launch in India was December 2018, if I'm not mistaken, right? So we don't play the gimmick by calling the chipset good in China or calling it old in India. We don't mislead the customers. We believe the customers who have used Realme 3 Pro understands its performance. And Realme 3 Pro performance, I don't see any of the users complaining about the performance on the chipset side from 710. I want to do a little bit of comparison now. Snapdragon 710, Snapdragon 712, Snapdragon 730. So what's the difference a user will face in day-to-day -day scenario? We introduced the Snapdragon 700 series to bring the premium features which were otherwise only available to our users on the flagship 800 series. This was to also ensure that while we bring these premium features, the affordability is available to our partners. The Snapdragon 700 mobile platform caters to the consumer who is looking for an enhanced and an elevated experience, be it in any field, be it camera, be it gaming, or maybe just pure processing. Madhav, do you agree? I completely agree with what Rajan is saying. Snapdragon 7 series represents premium, be it 710 or 730, all of them more than enough for daily multitask and gaming. And processor is a critical part of a smartphone, but the only part of smartphone is not the processor. Hence, it's more about the user choice and the preference. Not everyone is extremely heavy gamer. Hence, it's really up to the users whether you would rather pay much extra to further improve your gaming experience. 
but I would believe for 710 you can play even games like PUBG on a high definition graphics without any legs. So if this type of games can be handled very very even by 710 so it is up to the user preference now what they want from the device. Thanks to both of you like that pretty much clears everything now. Uh, moving to the next one. What is the true power of Snapdragon 710 AIE and to which extent our users can exploit it? Actually, Snapdragon 710 is a generational sh shift from the Snapdragon 600. It's a totally new architecture which we brought in. Uh, it was, by the way, the first 10 nanometer chipset which was brought post the 800 series. Uh, in 710, the blocks are optimized to deliver an elevated experience for most and the mu much in demand and sought after premium features. Mother, would you like to add something? Yes, I do believe SD710 has been verified by customers and uh, I think none of the customers wherever when we used is in Realme 3 Pro. I have not seen any single customer complaining about SD710 chipsets up till now. So they have completely flawless experience on the device. We'll take one more Snapdragon 710 question and this time I like, I like uh, Madhav to start. It's like a very, very important question from our customers. Like, why do we use Snapdragon 710 on Realme X? Okay. I can easily define the best product. Full view display with pop-up front camera, 64 megapixel quad rear camera, Qualcomm 8 series chipset, all the best specs put together in one phone. Good users will all wait for it to be launched. But how much it would be, would be about 40K plus. At this price, most people wouldn't afford. What is the use of advanced technology when you cannot massify the technology or you can reach out from the normal customers? While defining a smartphone, for me, it would be we need to think what price segment I should be in and then decide what matters for the customers in that price segment. I define Realme X as the most practical premium smartphone, the premium for youth. Hence, we have full view display, super AMOLED, pop up camera, in display fingerprint, 48 megapixel Sony sensor. And that also with a good performing chipset, which is SD7 and which is the most stable uh, chipset. If I put SD730 at Realme X at a price about 20K or around 20K, some users might feel happy because they go for the extreme gaming or for the sake of the new chipsets. But many would have been said that it becomes expensive. So it's all about balancing specs and the price and user expectations at the same time. Rajan, what do you think about Snapdragon 710 on Realme X? I strongly believe Realme X has truly leveraged the right potential of Snapdragon 710 for the consumers that they have targeted. Absolutely. Next one. Uh, can we judge a processor by benchmark scores? Ah, there are different benchmark scores that measure performance of a smartphone. They are to be taken as a guidance only and will typically represent different aspects or parts of a smartphone or a device. Benchmark scores are also evolving to measure these new dimensions of changing technologies. But they can only help up to a point because there is much more going on that delivers the experience on a smartphone. Ultimately, the user has to consider the experience he desires from the device and make the choice on the basis of that. Mother, what's your take on benchmark scores? See, I was speaking a normal consumer my user language the optimizing for a chipset is for a better user experience no matter from qualcomm or from realme our energy invested is only for user experience power efficiency ai capability or the gaming experience as example our optimization is never for end to do benchmark scores or to higher the benchmark scores some brand focuses for optimization entirely on benchmark scores hence when it comes to benchmark it is always scores high but when it comes to the user experience users have final say i believe it's not only about the entity and i would also like to ask one question to rajan i think entity benchmark scores keep on changing with the different scenarios and different environment the same time a 710 chipset can perform or have a different entity benchmark score in a different environment within the office or outside the office what's your say Typical benchmark scores are meant to be taken as a guidance mm -hmm. and the performance based on what part of a any of the benchmark score, yeah. right? What part it measures or what performance it measures, it will depend on that. Yeah. Here we are talking about, let's say, for example, NT2, which talks about and primarily does a few benchmarks on CPU mm -hmm. or a GPU, mm -hmm. right? 
but there are far more things which we have to keep in mind when you end up making any benchmark and that's why I said the consumer is the one who will decide what he wants and benchmark score typically acts as a guidance. Rajan, a crucial question for you now, like is there any way to overclock a chipset and some companies are getting higher benchmark scores with same chipsets? Look, as I said earlier, benchmark scores are taken as a, basically the consumer takes it as one more input in his decision making. End of the day, it is his experience what he's looking at. So I believe that while speed is very important, that is not the only driver for making a decision. Uh, Mother, would you like to add something? Some ran also invented a word underclock, calling it calling all its competitors using underclock chipsets. You can go to Qualcomm official website. I think there's nothing as such which is called underclock. As a brand, I think we should be more responsible from our side to guide the user in the right direction rather than misguiding them. I would always say that. Okay, let's take some technical questions now. Uh, user wants to know, what's the dif difference between a GPU and a CPU and which one is more important? Uh, each one of them is important, so it cannot be said that a CPU or a GPU, which one is important. But a central processing unit, that's a CPU, provides the processing power and which in layman language you can say uploading of the apps or you do multitasking, that's when the CPU comes in the picture. Graphics processing unit or the GPU is responsible for enabling all the graphics capabilities which are important in, in all the aspects like gaming, video delivery and providing a very immersive experience when you are watching videos. There are other components which are also very critical and contribute to the experience delivery on the device like the DSP, the ISP, the modem. So that, that way the whole device is created out of multiple such blocks or units. That's, that's really knowledgeable to know that. Uh, let's, talk, uh, let's talk about 5G now. So is Qualcomm ready for 5G in India? Earlier this year, Qualcomm announced a series of first 5G devices launch, device launches globally at MWC. We now have, as we speak, around 75 plus design, devices under design. Some of them are already launched and commercially launched in quite a few regions. 5G auctions in India are imminent and we will have 5G networks in India pretty soon. I think we would like to have your comment on the same. When India is ready for 5G, I will surely launch 5G products much before that for my country. Next question, how Qualcomm sees AI capability of chipsets nowadays and in the future? Qualcomm introduced the AI engine on Snapdragon 800 and brought it to other Snapdragon platforms over a period of time. AI started with limited use cases like camera, but over the period of time it expanded to other areas like voice recognition, gaming, AR applications and much more. AI was always there as a part of a, of a device in some form, but a very rudimentary form. What has happened now is it contributes to a to a major extent to the enhanced experiences that we are delivering which are basically demanded by the consumer. Mother, we have used AI a lot. What do you think about that? From our Realme 1 till now, I think we have always insisted on AI. AI and 5G is the future. They will bring smartphone industry into another level, connect everything together and make it more human. Absolutely. Uh, the next one. So. Rajan, how Qualcomm sees Realme and uh, what do you think about growth of Realme in India as well as, the, as well as the world? Realme's success in this diverse and very dynamic market of India is a testimony of much more of such successes coming in other parts of the world, not just India. I believe Realme understands and implements the customer feedback effectively and this is one key reason that Indian consumers love Realme. Madhav and his team, you guys have cracked the code and you have won the hearts of the Indian consumers. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, few questions for Madhav now. Uh, Realme recently talked about 64 megapixel camera. So what do you can share about that? High pixel doesn't necessarily mean better camera. If you go to Flipkart, you will find out Realme 3 Pro with 16 megapixel camera, which is having much better customer ratings compared to another 48 MP smartphones in the similar price segments. I believe camera is more of a combination of hardware and software. As of now, we are ready with hardware. Software optimization is happening and we gonna bring it to India as long as satisfying results were achieved. Won't rush to launch a product without proper camera tuning. We believe is hardware and software, a combination of together, which is HNS, which is heart and soul. So 
without hardware just giving you specs on paper won't make sense it should be combination of hardware and a proper software tuning to give you the best product output you are waiting for that now uh, next you. one what about android q on realme x why not definitely okay one more query from uh, consumers that camera to api and bootloader unlock on realme x yes definitely yes we have a lot of tech enthusiasts and from developers community and everything so definitely we will do that for sure well appreciated uh, one last question uh, can we purchase realme x spider man case which is available in the special spider man edition box no spider man edition is a limited edition we launched for marvel fans the case is unique and only available along with the special gift box <clears throat> Okay, that's all for today. Uh, it was an interesting conversation to see like you asking Rajan and he's very well replying to you. So I hope our users will get a lot of information from this episode. And thank you Rajan for joining us today. It was a privilege having you here. Thank you Madhav. Uh, would you like to add something before we wrap up? Thank you Rajan very much for joining us over here and helping our users to understand more about the Qualcomm. And I think Qualcomm is one of their favorite chipsets. So thank you very right. much for joining in, right? Thanks. We may try to call you once more again, right? Absolutely. Before I end up, there's an upcoming sale for Realme X and 3i coming up. Realme X is on 24th of this month, 12 noon, and Realme 3i is on 23rd, 12 noon. So guys, see you over there. Thank you very much. Hope all your queries are answered. If not, simply go to Realme community or Ask Madhav. <laughs>